good morning students so yesterday class we discussed about uh, simple rank and cycle means ideal rank and cycle and real rank and cycle. in real rank and cycle we are not changing the process but we considered whatever the losses are taking place in the turbine and compressor and we calculate one simple problem how the efficiency reduction is taking place if ideal rank and cycle i am applying the same pressure and temperature limits efficiency we are getting 25 percentage real rank and cycle if you consider the losses of turbine and compressor the efficiency is reduced to 22.5 percentage now we move to the so what we understand by this analysis the efficiency maximum will get if simple rank and cycle i am using the maximum efficiency we can achieve 25 percentage or 30 percentage not more than that but this rank and cycle we are using for all our electrical generation needs already in 2021 in 2020 itself 65 percentage of the power generation electrical energy generation based on the rank and cycle based power plants only so if you enhanced one percentage of the rank and cycle if you are cap capable to enhance the efficiency of one percentage five lakh megawatt per hour five lakh mega units we are producing Huge enhancement will come. Small 1% rise of the efficiency or 0.1% rise of the efficiency. So, efficiency enhancement is the major driving force because we are not changing the vapor power cycle, rank and cycle. Why? Because in the universe, we have only one vapor power cycle that is the rank and cycle. That's all. So, there is no alternate. Suppose in air standard cycle, auto cycle is there, diesel cycle is there, dual cycle is there. So, we are changing the cycles for efficiency enhancement purpose or utilization of different fuels like that. But in vapor power cycles, only one cycle that is rank and cycle. So, now it is hook or crook. There is a need to enhance the efficiency of the rank and cycle, no other option. Why we are enhancing it? Majority, 60 percentage of the electrical generation based on the rank and cycle thermal power plants. If you enhance, we can reduce the cost of production, not only cost of production, we can reduce the pollution from the power plants. So, environmental pollution we are reducing and we are reducing the fossil fuel imports also. Coal, we are importing some of the coal is available here, Singer and some, I think, Jarkhand. But that is not sufficient to fulfill our needs. We are importing from Australia, African countries. So, imports of the fossil fuel we can reduce. Clean energy, we are enhancing the efficiency. Carbon credits also coming to the picture. So, for that reason, we have to enhance the efficiency of rank and cycle. That's fixed there is no other alternative. How we can enhance the efficiency? That is main important. How we can enhance the efficiency of the rank and cycle? That is the first important point. Rank and cycle operating between two pressures. One is boiler pressure, second one is condenser. Condenser pressure we calculated up to 0.7 bar we moved. Further reduction also we can take place because 0.7 bar pressure, the condenser temperature is 95 degrees. At 0.7 bar pressure, the condenser temperature is 95 degrees centigrade. Not 95, 92. We can move up to 0.1 bar pressure at that time the condenser temperatures are 45 or 46 something. So, the then we are reducing the condenser pressure. What means the turbine outlet we are increasing? We are not increasing any boiler inlet. Without increasing boiler inlet, we are increasing the turbine outlet. But compressor, the pump power input is increasing. 
but I already mentioned thousand time difference is there. So the less with the less uh, power input to the pump, we are producing high power output from the turbine. So one of the first option to enhance the efficiency of rank and cycle first reduce the condenser pressure is the first advantage but there is a limitation if i want to reduce the pressure i can move to any pressure any vacuum pressure why because i want to reject the heat any time we are rejecting the heat means based on the more than ambient condition more than ambient temperature atmosphere temperature our condenser temperature we are maintaining then only we can reject the heat. Otherwise, we are absorbing the heat. It will act as a not condenser. It will act as a evaporator. So, the condenser pressure, there is a limitation. What is that limitation? The condenser temperature always higher than the ambient temperature. So, country to country, the condenser pressure is changing. Suppose Russia, maybe average temperatures, maybe minus temperatures also they are maintaining. Uh, South India, 35 degrees uh, the average temperature of the water, 35 to 38 degrees. So heat carrying by the liquid only, 35 to 38 degrees. So at least uh, uh, stagnation in temperature we are considering 5 means at least 43 to 45 degrees you have to maintain in South India. I move to the North India, sometimes uh, it will come 35 to 80, sometimes it will come 0 also. So seasonally also changing the condenser temperature the condenser pressure we have to change so the condenser pressure there is a limitation up to generally in south india the condenser pressure is 0 0.1 bar 0 0.1 bar pressure up to 0 0.1 bar pressure we are moving at the time the saturation temperature of the uh, steam the condensation steam is 42 degrees something so we can reduce the boiler uh, condenser pressure, we can enhance the efficiency, but some limitation is there. Move to second. Superheat the steam. Because we are increasing the heat input, automatically work output is also increasing. And one more advantage, the last stages of the turbine blades not facing any uh, water condensation water impingement of the turbine blade we can eliminate if you are doing superheating the best method so you can superheat the steam but there also some limitation is there while superheating of the steam there also some limitation is there what is that limitation material constraint at a high pressure whatever the materials are available because boilers are not small devices Small devices means we can, uh, whatever the cost for, uh, we can invest, that is not a big issue. But boilers are big devices, we have investment cost is there. At present, at a high pressure, the maximum temperature holding of the boiler material is 650 degrees centigrade. Maximum temperature. So you can superheat the steam in the boiler, maximum 650 not more than that so by superheating of the steam we can move up to 650 degree centigrade only not more than that that's a material constraint so one is reduction of the condenser pressure there is a constraint of ambient temperature second one is rising of superheating of the steam there also material constraint up to 650 degree centigrade next move to third point Increase the pressure of boiler. If you increase the pressure of the boiler, in that condition also you can enhance the efficiency by because turbine outlet, turbine, we are increasing the turbine output, we are increasing the pressure of the boiler, not only increasing turbine output. In the boiler latent heat input we are reducing is cycle number of cycles per minute we can increase because latent heat addition only taking more time so we are eliminating latent heat addition while we are increasing the pressure up to supercritical means more than 220 bar pressure if ultra supercritical means up to 250 bar pressure this one also proposed in 1920s itself 
this proposal also came one more energy efficiency enhancement criteria move to the boiler pressure super critical range but some constraint is there i will discuss that one so third method enhance the boiler pressure so there is no issue up to 300 bar pressure at present so ultra super critical thermal power plants are erection and commissioning in india also ultra super critical thermal power plants are taking place super critical itself 2007 they initiated haryana i think reliance group then after so many power plants came the picture uh, so but what is the major concern you are increasing the pressure but temperature not increasing the maximum temperature limit at high pressure the material withstanding temperature 650 so our temperature somewhere here it is not increasing so the end stage of the steam in the turbine oil expansion condensation is taking place means water droplets are coming that the water droplets impinging the turbine blades automatically it will damage the turbine blades so increasing of the pressure is the best method so we can uh, get uh, very good work output and uh, number of cycles per minute we can increase with the cycle time in the boiler heat addition we are reducing the latent heat addition so everything is good but only one drawback while it expansion some of the after expansion after 50% of expansion 60% expansion of the steam the steam condensation started in the turbine blades itself then the water droplets will impinge the turbine blades and damage of the turbine blades will occur to overcome that one what we can do i should told at 1922 itself at that time first power plant rank and cycle power plant erection commissioning at 27 bar pressure it is starting at 1922 at 1922 at present we reached to up to 300 bar pressure today and now we reached 1000 megawatt of single turbine at that time 50 megawatt is a single turbine capacity 50 50 50 one uh, unit means a cluster of 10 turbines will give some 500 megawatt now single turbine unit is capable to produce 1000 megawatt that much of capacity by the super critical operation we are achieving the 40 percentage efficiency also but the advantage of enhancement of the boiler pressure we can get advantage by because efficiency is enhanced but main problem excessive moisture in final stage of turbine is taking place so we want to remove that we, can, we want to overcome that obstacle then we can enhance the boiler pressure up to 300 bar pressure at present maximum pressure ultra super critical thermal power plant operating pressure is 300 bar what we can do means superheat the steam first thing yet as possible as temperature that temperature only 650 then second that one we want to do to take the advantage of boiler pressure enhancement one is super heating already i mentioned but maximum 650 work second one reheating the steam means we are expanding the steam in primary turbine expanding the steam in primary turbine up to saturation limit then same steam again will enter into the boiler and reheat to the same outlet boiler temperature means less than 651 and further expansion in low pressure turbine if super critical means again intermediate pressure and low pressure turbine three turbines will come main turbine intermediate turbine and low pressure turbine. super critical Subcritical turbines only one reheating is more than sufficient. 
so we are expanding superating the steam to take advantage of the boiler pressure rise then after expand the steam up to saturation point we are expanding like this means again the condensation of the steam will take place but we are not expanding up to this point up to saturation limit we are expanding then reheat in the boiler and expand in low pressure turbine then we can take the advantage of rising of boiler pressure to the super critical and ultra super critical range by reheating we are increasing the heat input and automatically work output also increasing but efficiency enhancement how it will take place by rising of the boiler pressure instead of 30 bar pressure i am running the boiler earlier condition now i can move on 50 bar pressure with a single reheat if double we heat i place that we move more than 220 bar pressure okay so reheating the main um uh, intention of the reheating to take the advantage of rising of the boiler pressure in the turbine that is the first intention okay you see the reheat rank and sec the because in examination they may ask explain reheat rank and sec same components turbine boiler pump condenser all are same here pump we are using by using that pump we are rising the liquid pressure from condenser pressure to the boiler pressure same liquid 1 2 2 is same liquid enter sub cool liquid enter into the boiler and absorb heat and move to the saturation liquid then after saturation vapor then after superated steam at superated steam it is entering into the high pressure boiler and expanding up to what pressure expanding where the drainage fraction is coming one means at a, Uh, uh dry steam condition up to dry steam condition on which pressure up to which pressure we are getting dry steam condition up to that pressure it is expanding then it is moved to the reheating again it is going to the boiler and reheating of the steam is taking place reheating to the initial temperature whatever the superheat temperature is there in the boiler up to that superheat temperature only we are reheating the steam in the boiler then again it is entering into the low pressure turbine again low pressure turbine it is coming entering into the low pressure turbine and expanding the steam in the low pressure turbine up to condenser pressure okay up to it is expanding condenser pressure you see the end stage of turbine majority of the drainage fraction we can achieve more than 0.95 okay this is the ideal reheat rank and so so here you see heat input now i want to calculate heat input means first we are supplying heat h3 minus h2 enthalpy at the boiler outlet minus enthalpy of boiler inlet you will get the heat input to the boiler it's a primary heat input the secondary heat input means reheat input h5 minus h4 again the A steam is entering into not directly to the low pressure turbine. Again, it is entering to the boiler only. Then H4 minus H5. This is the heat input to the boiler. So now heat input to the boiler means the primary heat input is H3 minus H2 plus the reheat input H5 minus H4. This is the heat input to the boiler for reheat rank and second single reheat rank. Double means one more rank. next turbine outlet turbine outlet means turbine inlet enthalpy means turbine and outlet enthalpy of high pressure turbine this is the first turbine outlet h3 minus h4 this is the turbine output next second turbine output what is the second turbine output again after reheating again it is entering into the low pressure turbine at the enthalpy of h5 and expanding up to condenser pressure to h6 so h5 minus h6 so now turbine output H3 minus H4 plus H5 minus H6. Next condenser heat loss same H6 minus H1 only. Condenser inlet minus condenser. Next pump pump uh, work input same single pump only we are using H2 minus H4. Simple energy balance equation for the 
turbine pump h2 minus h1 boiler the primary heat input and reheat input primary h3 minus h2 reheat h5 minus h4 the turbine turbine 1 and turbine 2 h3 minus h4 and h5 minus h6 condenser h6 minus h1 then thermal efficiency of the rankine cycle the reheat rankine cycle network output by heat supply to the boiler turbine output turbine 1 plus turbine 2 output minus pump input or heat supply to the boiler primary heat supply plus reheat supply minus condenser heat resection we will get the w net then divided by the heat supply boiler you will get the efficiency steam rate same equation how much mass flow rate of the steam is required for production of 1 kilowatt power 3600 by network output Heat rate, how much heat supply is required in kilojoules per hour for production of 1 kilowatt power? Same 3600 by efficiency. So, finally, three methods we can enhance the efficiency. First method is reduce the condenser pressure of the Franken cycle. Second, re superheat the steam in the boiler. Third, Raise the pressure of boiler, but we want to take the advantage of raise the pressure of the boiler, we have to introduce reheating. Then only we can take the advantage of raise the pressure of the boiler. Next class, we can discuss the next methods. Okay, with this I am ending today's session. Thank you.